with the brand new Cobra 2023 driver coming soon, which older version is going to be the best value for you. It amazes me the three drivers that I have in the bag today came out in three separate years by Cobra and on the second hand market, 50 to 60 pounds separates the oldest one, the newest one. And with the rumors of the new Aerojet Cobra driver on the horizon, surely that means only one thing going to get even cheaper now i want to talk about the brand new aerojet driver as it's missing one big factor that all of these three drivers have in common and even though nothing is set in stone i'll be very interested to hear why cobra potentially has gone down that path but first before we get into all of that we have to have a look at these three drivers because and not going for that much money. And even though all second-hand prices of all golf clubs have dropped, obviously, winter, and let's say the general economics of the world right now, but out of all the major brands, especially the LTDX, which we'll obviously test in a minute, amazing the kind of prices that you can pick it up for. And the big question is, is it because it's an awful driver or potentially because it's relatively underrated when it comes to the second-hand market? So let's talk price of the speed zone, the cheapest out of the three. And typically I would say, always go with the cheapest because drivers haven't changed. It's as fast as the others. It's actually a very forgiving style head as well. So a lot of you average golfers that want that forgiving side of the game as well, it makes sense that this driver ticks a lot of boxes. However, I have made arguments for the other two drivers in this bag why you would spend a tiny bit more. And that's why I find this lineup of drivers fascinating. We're not talking about a 300 pound upgrade. I'm not talking about you go from this to the brand new TaylorMade or brand new Callaway or brand new whatever it is at 499. I'm talking three different drivers from three different years and roughly about 30 pounds separates them, well, from each other. So the bonuses of the speed zone, obviously price point, it's going to be the cheapest one to get hold of. The infinity face as well, I think it's a bonus. No one else has that face going over the crown. And for a lot of you guys that are starting this game, it gives you a bit of reassurance. If you do sky it, if you do scuff it, guess what? You won't scratch or scuff or hinder that gleaming crown that you just got, which you would do from the majority of other drivers out there. And as much as we ignore the psychological part of this game, if you scuff the top of your driver and you're constantly standing over the thing, being reminded of that, I can't see how that's gonna help your next few tee shots. Which neatly brings me on to this bad boy right here. I think we can all agree it didn't light up the golfing world when it was released. However, unlike the speed zone, from what I've seen on eBay, you can find bundles of these, if not brand new in the wrapper for just 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds more at the 150 pound price tag. And it has every feature of what the speed zone had. The only slight difference between this and the speed zone, that it's got a relatively acquired taste when it comes to the paint job. The best bit about that is some of you will love it, some of you won't like it, but at 150 pounds, which if you watch one of my recent videos, I feel like is the baseline. Every driver at one point in time, some get there sooner than others, will come down to 150 pounds, meaning you could pick this or the other driver. Arguably, it's gonna be easier to find this one in better condition, but they won't go under 100 pounds for the next five years, as that's the same trajectory that every other second-hand driver released from a big name brand manufacturer has done, well, in the past. Which is interesting, as the faces from Cobra, especially looking at the photos, of the brand new 2023 driver coming out, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail in a minute, almost seems like there's a progression back to what the old Cobra drivers were. We don't have the infinity face going over the crown, as you can see there. Very much similar to every other driver on the market. And I have to say, 
I think it looks better. Forget what I said in terms of sky in the top of the drive. And let's be honest, a good portion of us wouldn't even be worrying about that in the first place. Not to mention the matte carbon finish on the top. It is the best looking Cobra driver in terms of aesthetics Cobra have brought out in a very long time. However, we only have to look at the second-hand prices again of this driver, and it's easily the cheapest at this point in time of filming when you compare it to the second-hand prices of, let's say, the Stealth or the Rogue ST, when all of these drivers came out at a relatively similar recommended retail price. And as you can see there, we have the HOT face with the CNC milled stamp on the bottom there. And let's talk a bit more about what that CNC milling is actually for. Now the F8 driver was the first Cobra driver to come out with the CNC milling. And to be honest, with the price of that thing, considering how old it is compared to these ones, you can see that Cobra drivers are gonna hold their price around that 100 pound price tag. So no matter which one potentially you're gonna get for your bag out of these three, just know you're not gonna lose any more than 100 pounds and that's with the latest and greatest. The CNC milling isn't there to make the face faster or more forgiving, it's so that there's no tolerances and tolerances are a rife in golf. You think you're getting a nine degree driver, you think you're getting a stiff flex shaft and that you're getting the same face as the one that you tested in the custom fitting room and that just isn't the case and obviously we're talking margins here but the idea behind the cnc milling is that the face that you test in your club fit or the face that you test in the demo will be the face that you then get when it arrives in the box brand new tell you what this driver definitely sounds different to the other two there's no question about that I don't know if that's a good or bad thing at this point. Again, that's why you'll see mill grind putters and you'll see mill grind wedges because realistically, there's only one way to have zero tolerances in this game and that's by taking the handcrafting out of it. Anything handcrafted, when it has the human element at play, there's going to be mistakes, very fine and small mistakes. And when it comes to milling, milled grinds or milling of the face, it's a lot of money. The machines cost a lot of money, especially the time it takes to produce them. Hence why it's more expensive to have milled grind. Well, anything. So when I saw the images of the Aerojet still having the HOT face, as you see with the LTDX, but I'd be very interested to see if Cobra doesn't have any milling on their faces in 2023. And then the big question, well, why is that? And to be honest, a lot of you are probably thinking it's because they want to make more margin. It's cheaper not to have a milled grind face in the driver. However, I would somewhat disagree because the amount of money Cobra invested in their milled driver face manufacturing to such a point, I'm pretty sure it's cheaper for them to make a milled grind face at this point opposed to a conventional one. But just like all driver faces that I've seen over the last five years, whether it's made of carbon, titanium, graphite, kryptonite, whatever it is, it still has to be conforming. So no matter how thin it is or what you make it of, technology, there's technology that it's still got to come off the face as fast as every other driver on the market or that's come out in the last eight years. So which is my favourite out of the three? And I'm going to be very unconventional against the grain and say the rad speed, the supply you can get it, the condition you can get it, i.e. you can get some of these brand new, are still 60 to 70 pounds cheaper than this one here. And even though aesthetically, I think the LTDX looks great, to be honest, it just sounds a bit different when I compare it to the other ones. And I love a dull sounding driver. I'll just have to get used to the lime green in the bag if I was to ever get one. Guys, if you like this video, you might like my Ping G430 alternative selection up here on the right hand side. Catch you guys there.